They would like the sources to be independent from one another so that there is no collaboration. Well, again, so this point right here should really be worked into the multiple sources up above, multiple independent sources. So uh, he's really just split one criteria, and that's a minor disagreement, really, because he's still requiring independent sources here. It just needs to be independent in regards to having multiple sources. Just because you have a singular independent source doesn't mean that that indicates that you know something existed in history, although that would be really great if we had that. Sadly, though, for the historical Jesus, we don't. Are they independent sources? How many exactly is fiercely debated among scholars. But the answer is definitely. Paul does not have any knowledge of the Gospels because they were not written yet when he was writing. The Gospels, with the exception of Luke, do not seem to know anything about Paul. The book of John doesn't seem to have any knowledge of the Synoptic Gospels or Paul. So that one's going to get a blue check. Uh, okay, again, I vehemently disagree with this point. And this should really be lumped in with the first point, but, you know, he's got them in separate points. In any case, the Synoptic Gospels definitely all knew Paul's work in one way or another. John ultimately knew the Synoptic Gospels. So let's kind of break this down to see how we know these things. Let's start with Mark's gospel and his connection with Paul. In case you want further information on this or, you know, you're one of those people that loves to read like New Testament scholarship or whatnot, here's a list of the current scholarship that is putting forth the best arguments to show this link between Mark's gospel and Paul's work. So if you want to go and check that out, please do. Now, the case that connects the gospel of Mark to Paul is cumulative and fairly strong. The way that we know that Paul's work influenced the gospel of Mark is through several instances in Mark where he obviously had to have gotten this kind of idea from Paul. One of the clearest examples of this is Jesus on taxation. Now, writing prior to the Gospel of Mark, Paul was saying that it was his own opinion that you should pay your taxes. In several instances, whenever he's talking about like a commandment from Jesus or something that Jesus said or Jesus commanded, he explicitly indicates that Jesus did say these things or that Jesus commanded these things. Like, for instance, 1 Corinthians 9.14, which says, In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. Let's compare this to Romans 13.5 and 6. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of the possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes. For the authorities are God's servants, who give their full time to governing. So as we can tell here, this is not a commandment from Jesus, nor is this anything that Jesus has said as far as Paul understands it. This is Paul rationalizing his way into saying that the Christians should submit themselves to the governing authorities because the governing authorities are put there by God, and that this is also the reason why you should pay your taxes. Now, let's fast forward in time to around 70 AD when the Gospel of Mark is being written. Let's go to Mark 12, 13 to 17. Later, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay the imperial tax? to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? He asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. They brought the coin and he asked them, whose image is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. So as you can tell, the Gospel of Mark reifies this information into history as coming directly from Jesus. While Paul, an earlier and independent account, doesn't show any kind of indication that he knows that Jesus taught this. If he had any kind of indication that Jesus taught this, then he would have definitely said that the Lord has commanded it because... That right there in the Gospel of Mark was the Lord commanding. All the Gospel of Mark's author did was take what Paul said about paying your taxes and put it into Jesus' mouth in a way that Jesus would have taught for Mark's Gospel. This is but one particular piece of evidence, and like I said, the 
case is cumulative for the Gospel of Mark, knowing Paul's work. So I highly suggest everybody reads up on this with the sources that I mentioned before. If you don't want to go through all of those sources, I will have an article linked down below by Richard Carrier that pretty much summarizes the best case put forward by all of the sources mentioned. So definitely go down there and check that out. Other examples of the Gospel of Mark using Paul in order to inform his gospel would concern things like the Last Supper. Another thing is this idea that when we resurrect, we'll be resurrected into these divinely created bodies. And uh, in Mark, Jesus actually directly says that this will happen while Paul has to struggle to justify this particular theology because it didn't come from Jesus at least for Paul. Also, the Gospel of Mark is full of various Pauline themes, like equating Jesus' sacrifice to the Passover and the Yom Kippur ritual. Also, Mark reifies Paul's idea of a Torah-free gospel uh, into his gospel. Mark also has Jesus teaching about divorce in the exact same way that Paul does. Another thing is this phrase, Abba Father. Paul uses this phrase, and it's a repeated duplicative. And so what Mark does is he just has Jesus saying it. So there's another connection. Although that was a little bit weaker than the others, but still it's there. Another thing that Mark does is because Paul rebukes Peter, he also has Jesus rebuking Peter. The list goes on and on and on of the connections between the synoptic gospels, namely, you know, the gospel of Mark with Paul's epistles. So there's definitely a connection there. Now, on to John's gospel. It's quickly becoming the consensus opinion in Johannian studies that the gospel of John definitely knew the synoptic gospels. This is what L. Michael White has to say about the connection between the gospel of John and the other gospel. John's many changes to the synoptics may well have been made intentionally and with full awareness of the synoptic tradition. Several features of the Jahanian narrative seem to reflect such an awareness and use of the synoptic tradition, including direct verbal similarities with distinctive linguistic formulations or narrative elements in Mark and Luke, respectively. There are several different ways in which we know that the Gospel of John definitely knew at least Luke. One of the more notable connections that we have is the story of Lazarus. Luke has a completely different Lazarus than the Gospel of John. Luke's Lazarus is a parable that's meant to convey the message that no amount of miracles are going to save anybody. So there's really no point in Jesus doing a miracle because that's not going to cause people to believe. While John's Lazarus is a real Lazarus, not a parable, that is resurrected from the dead, and that miracle immediately converts a lot of people to believing in Jesus and praising him. This is one of the more glaring redactions or corrections that John does, but John also has a lot of other things that he takes from the Synoptic Gospels and twists or just completely rewrites. Another connection is that the Gospel of John seems to have taken Mark's pairing of both the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus walking on the water. John uses the exact same sequence as Mark does, which means that he most likely got it from Mark's gospel. And we know this because the pairing of both of those events was a product of Mark's literary structure. There's also several small details that both the Gospel of John and Mark report and there are so many in the exact same sequence that it's hard to say that the Gospel of John did not know Mark's Gospel. If you would like to know more about the connections between the Gospel of John and the other Synoptic Gospels and how this is becoming a consensus among Johannian studies, uh, I will have a list up here of all of the relevant um, sources that you can look into if you choose to. And if you, you know, get your kicks and giggles from reading scholarly sources like that, then please check them out. But the point is, is that the Gospel of John definitely knew the synoptics, which, if we go back to the first point that Dadpool made, means that the Gospels, all of the Gospels, are not independent accounts. And there are no other independent accounts external to the Bible. So that leaves us with just Paul's account as being the single independent account that we have about Jesus. So independent sources? No, more like independent source, maybe. As far as textual sources go, he is independent of all other texts that we have. So he's independent in that way. But claiming that we definitely have independent sources about Jesus existing in history, that's just not true. Thank you